hello everyone in this video i am going to teach you what are the template driven forms and what are the reactive forms so we will try to understand what is the difference between them and what are the use cases for each of them where we should one over the another and where we should try to avoid the one so we will try to understand the technicalities first theoretically and then i have an example of a code in my vs code then we'll jump to a vs code and uh, we'll see an example where i have created a simple form and want to show you how we can uh, accomplish a task of creating a form and uh, binding a data to it with uh, both of these approaches so first point template driven form is a uh, basically heavily relies on the use of the directives to bind the data so you can see that uh, wherever we have used an uh, template driven form there we must need to use an ng model so if you don't know ng model is a directive which allows us to do a two-way binding in angular so by the mechanism of the two-way binding we can pass the data from our template uh, which is our html file back to the typescript code in the component.ts and vice versa on the other hand reactive forms it uses the concept of the reactive programming like the observables subscriptions and uh, then it manages to man manipulate the data which is present in the form field so here we are not completely relying on the use of the ng model instead of that it uses the observables at its states there are a couple of events which are running behind the scenes which tells uh, the form which is the uh, template on the the page ultimately it's a html content that is rendering it tells depending on if data is changed uh in the component i'm referring to an uh, typescript code or ultimately it's a javascript code so if anything is changed in the javascript code any data then through a way of observables it tells an html to render it again to uh, discard the old state and to refresh it to show the new data on the page so this is the way how it works second thing form data is managed by angular's template driven directive not by code this is very good point actually so the data which we see in the form is managed by the template so it's not just an ng model is the only one template that we can use in the template driven form we can use a plain directive like value where we just find a data or uh, we can even use the template variables if you don't know the template variables template variables were the old approach in the uh, older versions of the angular where we used to bind the data to html tags using uh, its own syntax where we put a hash and then the variable name in the html and through which we can uh, add an uh, identifier to a html tag any tag in the html it doesn't matter whether it's a custom tag or a built-in tags of the html so through a use of a template variables we can add identifier to any tag and then uh, we can bind the data to it we can keep an eye on events happening on that tag for example if i have a button and in that button i have put a template variable as identifier as a submit button then i can monitor all the events happening on that button like a click mouse hover and other events which are standard in the javascript i can also change the inner text of it or if it's an input field i can also change the value of it using a template variable so the template variable was the old approach which you can still leverage to create the template driven forms and on the reactive forms we are not using that so the reason being if you see the code which is written in the template driven form there you have to for each input field or each element which is present in your form you have to create a template variable to identify it so in that approach you are going to end up having too many template variables in your html file and uh, you not only you just have to write a lot of code but at later point it will become a bottleneck for you where you have to maintain the too many variables and it may create a confusion for you also can give a uh, chance for any runtime bugs to appear if it's not uh, used properly that risk you are completely avoiding with the reactive form because the form data is managed and manipulated by code so you can create your own objects in the code itself and you can uh, like specify the uh, object type you can uh, uh, you can make the custom types also and if you have to put an any logic which will be basically updating the data in the form that you can do through a way of updating that objects in the code itself so you don't have to go to a template or do much of the logic or you don't have to monitor the events in the html uh, code now with the reactive forms third point is about the validation the validations in the template driven forms are triggered through the events like the submit blurs 
and that's pretty obvious that's the way we do in the javascript if we have to do a validation we put it on the basis of the events like the button is clicked submit button is clicked so you check all the fields are present there or not or if the value is enter like key up key down events if you are putting an uh, uh, field as an email then to check if it is uh, following the regular expression of the email so that things basically you have to put on the events and it's the same practice happening here in the reactive form as well so there is a no difference in terms of the mechanism but it's important to understand that in the template even those are the specific events that you are writing in your html code and you are invoking them from the html on other hand in the reactive forms you are not doing that you are keeping your html code as clean as possible and you are handling those things in your form and since the reactive form has too many enhancements added it you don't have to write the code for every validation there are uh, properties comes along with uh, your input field or uh, or any uh, other fields for that matter you where you just have to specify the validators as a one field and inside that validator you can specify that what are all the things all the rules that you want to check on this so you don't need to write or touch your html code here in the reactive forms template driven forms is suitable for the simple forms if you have a form which is containing very less properties inside it you don't have too much of the properties you are not doing much uh, data transformation on the uh, data which is entered into it or the data that you have to bind to it so if you have that kind of a uh, necessity where you don't have to do much of the things on the forms and it's very small in size then it's good to go with the template driven forms but if you have the complex form which contains the too many fields and you have to uh, also uh, put a logic behind how you want to show that fields how you want to process the data coming out of that fields then you have to go with the reactive forms in my opinion and from my experience of seven years working on angular i would say in 99 percent of the cases i use the reactive forms uh, irrespective whether it was a small or a big because it is future proof that if i am doing it in the reactive form if in future if there is any complex logic comes or if i have to do any uh, changes in the future it becomes easy as a developer for me to do the changes using the reactive forms instead of a template driven forms now i want to show you one example of a form i have created a simple form using telwind css uh, where i have these three fields in my form and i want to get a data which is entered into this form and want to process it so i want to show you first approach of the template driven form how i can accomplish this task uh, through a template driven form so i will come to my html file so this is the code for my form entirely you can see it is enclosed in the form tag and i have the bunch of the things style related things which are coming from the uh, telwind css so first thing i will do is as i was talking about for a template driven form to work it needs to have an, a directive from angular so i will add a directive ng model and i will put an identifier to it as a name so if you can see that when i added it it says that I can't bind ng model since it is a known property of an input so this is a very typical error in the angular and this happens because the input tag is not able to identify whether the ng model is the property of it because the ng model is the directive which is present in your forms module so in order to get rid of this you have to uh, you have to import this module namely forms module and you can see that the error will disappear now so i have added the ng model name to this particular field namely um, name and i have the input for it so this is the one way i can do it and if you remember a few minutes back i was talking about template variables through which i can also accomplish the same thing so this was the syntax for the template variable and it is still valid in the angular it's not that it's deprecated you can still use the template variable through this syntax where you can put hash and the, any custom name that you want like name blah blah whatever i can put and with this template variable i can still take the value which is present in the input i can still manipulate it i can add value i can monitor the events happening on this uh, input property and all that is still possible but for this example i will show how we can do it with the ng model so i added the ng model name for the name similarly i will do for the email and the message so here now i have to create this variables in my component batch so i will go here I will put it uh, from or, yeah I will do it this way I just created the three more variables name email and uh, message 
let me get rid of this double one now what i will do in my submit i will put a click event and on the click i will call submit form method let me implement this method as well submit form and on the submit i just want to simply display the data that i have received so i will do a name uh, i will use an string template like this i to show a name email message and uh, i think i need to put this because it is the variable referred in the component okay so on the submit button i am just showing the value of it so i will come to the browser now and uh, we'll clear the console i have the name i will enter my name there any sample email id i'll put i this is template driven form i'll submit it and i think i made some mistake let me go back if i go to the submit form so i figured out that the problem was if i'm using a template driven form of approach and if i have used the ng model then I get this error in my console which says that if we are using ng model in the form tag then we have to either put a name attribute to each uh, element which is present in the form or we have to use the ng model option equals to standalone true so this is the uh, this is the way how the template driven form are, or if you are using an ng model you have to deal with it so that's why uh, it's not recommended i feel personally that reactive form is a very better or you don't have to to too many things like a template one forms in the reactive version so to uh, get around it with i will add a name attribute as that is said uh, in the error i will add it to the email for the message and now i think the error must have gone now and i can see the error is gone there we go so i can see that i have the name uh, email message and i can see there is a value already binded to the name because in my code what i did I put an initial value to name as a any this is because you can see that it has that value so this goes to the two-way binding concept if you remember that ng model is a two-way uh, binding directive it supports in both uh, both the template to component and the component to template so you can pass the data and read the data from it so that's why it is it can take an it can take an initial value to your form element so there we go I have the added all the names and uh, i will take you to the browser i will enter the values now i can see that as it was written in the submit form i can see the alert box with all the data that i have received from the form so this was the example of a template driven form now we will implement the same thing but now this time is with a reactive form so let's see how it works so as i told reactive form it works on a form group it needs to have one object of a form and inside that object we specify what are all the properties present for that object and what is its type what are the validators that you want to put so we'll write a code for a reactive form this time and uh, let's i will explain you that how it uh, works and why we have wrote it in the same way so first thing we have to create a form control for the uh, name that we are going to have here it's a uh, i'm going to create one form control then i will create a form group simple i'm just creating it for the one field for now i will extend it for all the three fields that we see on the uh, ui so i have created for only username but i will do the same thing for my email id and the message so i created a form group then uh, i want to listen to the changes that are happening on this username control so i'm simply subscribing to a value changes now this is the event that i was talking about if we have to do a validation we keep a subscription on the event i have to add this logic if there is a not value present in the username control then i will simply set an error and will tell that this the required is a true so i'm just adding a required attribute true there in the html dynamically through a code 
else i will set errors to null change this code i will make the username to just name i will do the same thing for the email and message this will give me an error so for the time being i will comment this code of the template one form then uh, i need to import this form control so i will import it from the angular forms similarly form groups i need to import from the angular forms i will add name equals to name now this is telling me that expected type comes from the name which is declared here on the type so i will so i have modified this code a little bit i have created a form i have removed the constant from it because i don't want to keep them constant here uh, so form i have of the type form group and i created the individual form control and in my form i just uh, establish a link between them like in my form i have a name email message and they are of a type name control email control and the message control and uh, similarly i have a submit form which was there in my reactive form previously and uh, here also i am uh, just showing the value of the one of the name control one of the controls which is a name so here instead of just using the name i have to use it if i have to access the value i have to put a dot value in front of it so that i can use a value because using the name control value is not just only purpose that you are going to you going to have you are going to have cases where you need to uh, listen to the uh, events happen adding that i will go to my uh reactive form example i have commented out the temporary one form example for time being and uh, i will add a uh, few changes into it so first thing that i'm going to do is i will add a form group and this form group directive i'm putting in the form tag and i'm referring it to the form variable that i just created so this form group is referring to this form so that uh, the html knows that the this particular form is going to hold the properties which are defined in the variable namely form this need to have a name email message so this is the one way through which it also checks that if the form contains all the properties or not similarly i want to add the form control name so this form control name will uh, be specific this acts as an identifier for the each uh, element which is present in the form so i will add it similarly for the message and uh, for the email so here it says that it can't bind the form group and this is the same error that was there for the form groups uh, since this form group is present in the reactive form we need to import that in our module so i will just import it reactive forms module and the error is gone now so and uh, on the click event i still have my submit form i will uh, come here and uh, yeah that's a simple logic i have in the submit form i'm just uh, showing the value of one of the field which is name so let's go to the browser and see how it works so if i am adding the value and click on the submit i can see that the value is printed here so this is the way how reactive forms work this is a difference we create the form group and add the form control to it and uh, in order to show the values uh, we use a dot value we have also other things that we can put like here you can see add asynchronous validator is the one thing and there are other things that you can put like errors is the one which basically will tell you this is a property which tell you that if there is any error present a validation error present on your name control field in the form or not so that was all for the reactive form and you can play around with the reactive form and explore that uh, we can even add the validators like this so you can see for the name i have added the validator that i want the name field to be required the minimum length to be a three even i can set the initial value of a name like something here so first parameter of this form control takes a uh, value so that you can do from here uh, you need to do a couple of changes here like uh, ng submit you have to put this event handler and the submit form method that you will put here and uh, form control name you already did so this was a classic example of the reactive form you can add the validators uh, with it you can also even play around and uh, uh, add something like the disable uh, which will be useful if you want to keep a button disable if there is any error which is present on the uh, on, on your form so you can do in this way so if form is not valid then you will simply make it disabled so i hope you find this helpful thank you for watching Thank you.